Yo, Andrew. Welcome to DC. Thank you. Just curious, you know, what have the last few months, few weeks been like for you as you've gotten acclimated to the organization? Um, honestly, it's been great. Um, this is my sixth year in the league, and um, this is the first time I've been around a group who, you know, everybody's been in town for a month before training camp, uh, working out, uh, working on us, getting to know each other. Bilal was just touching on some of it. So um, it's been really cool. Um, just like a, you know, you know, it's good to have a fresh start and, and be somewhere new. And, um, you know, the city's obviously great. Uh, so it's been uh, a lot of fun. I'm excited to, you know, continue to acclimate myself here, uh, get involved in the community, get to know everybody and, um, you know, get to the, get to the basketball. Obviously you had a tough injury. Just how are you feeling and what do you think the recovery process is going to be like? Uh, I feel great. I've had, you know, far worse injuries uh, regarding my feet. So um, this is one that, you know, is nothing to me. Um, it's unfortunate, the timing of it, obviously, you know, being a couple of days before training camp. But um, I'm not worried about, you know, the, the recovery process or it being too, too grueling or anything. So um, trust our, our uh, training staff, uh, the people I have around me, um, trust myself, and uh, I'm excited to get back. Hello and welcome to DC. Thank you. Man. Um, Appreciate it. What do you think about the roster and how much three-point shooting has been added to this team, and specifically the the ability that you have and Corey Kispert of moving without the ball and, and striking quickly with catch and shoots? Yeah. Well, very early on, I, I mean, obviously, I love I've loved getting to know Corey, uh, getting to play alongside of him, guard him, uh, getting to work with him. Um, you know, but we have a lot of, I mean, beyond just that, a lot of guards who can, you know, play without the ball and play the right way. Jordan coming from, you know, Golden State, you know, that's a staple in how they've played. Move the ball, play play off of it, you know, even though he's a, seen as like that kind of ball dominant scorer that, that he knows how to play without it. So um, that's something that you can see, you know, down the line, you know, of our group. Like we're going to have a fun group who's able to play that way uh, from top to bottom. So. Um, it's going to be fun. Um, it's been cool to, you know, kind of get, get acclimated on that front uh, for the last month and obviously going into camp tomorrow. Um, there's more to do on that end. Hey, Landry, welcome to D.C. What's up? Um, it's hard enough transitioning to a new city, uh, and then your injury obviously was very unfortunate. You mentioned trusting yourself, but how have the team, your teammates, your coaching staff, the front office helped you since you suffered your injury sort of get back on the horse and feel comfortable in a new city in light of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, this was only on – what Friday so it's only been a couple of days um, and like I said I mean it's not something that I view as like derailing me uh, or anything so um, I know my mind is in a in a solid space um, and I'm not I mean it'll be you know I'll miss some preseason and you know from there we'll see where I end up so um, you know I'm excited um, I'm not I'm really I'm in a really good spot spirits are high I'm excited for camp tomorrow even though I'm not going to be participating but you know to be there uh, be involved be a voice um, start learning just like the rest of us and um, get it going once you do get back on the court uh, it's a super deep room uh, on the wing here in DC what do you foresee your role being uh, whatever my team needs of me I feel like I'm a you know somebody who can, can bring something different night in and night out whatever's needed um, you know obviously we've all been working on our games this this offseason and and it's not really about any one individual. It's about all of us collectively. Each of us possesses something a little bit different from one another, and it's how you know we can all be able to, you know, mesh that uh, as best we can, night in and night out. So, um, you know, finding my role as as quickly as possible, you know, barring the injury, um, and figuring out what that's going to look like most nights. Hi, Landry. Uh, over here. What's up, man? Uh, you've been on a lot of really good teams, championship uh, teams with championship aspirations in your career, whether it's Brooklyn, Philly. The Clippers, Phoenix. Uh, now you come to a team like the Wizards. Sorry, uh, with uh, low expectations. You know they have the lowest win total expected in terms of Vegas. Is there a freeness around the team? Do you feel a little lighter now that those lofty expectations aren't you know hanging over everyone's head? I mean, those expectations. You know, to me, you look at both ends, right? You look at you know teams every year coming into the season. The team who's supposed to win a championship. You know, because I've been on those teams. Um, favorites, the, the worst teams in the league, both ends, the polar ends are very, 
I mean, that's the beauty of our game. You know, they don't, that doesn't mean anything uh, on any front. So you could, you know, on paper be the best team in the league and come out and, you know, a lot of people thought we should have won a championship last year in Phoenix. We had Kevin Durant. We don't, you know, like that's, that's our sport. So um, I'm excited. It's a dangerous group to, you know, you can step in front of a group with nothing to lose, no expectations, nobody thinks you're any good. Um, and, and that's kind of what we have facing us, and that's that kind of gets me going a little bit. It fires me up. Um, obviously, this is new. Most media days have been questions about how you guys are going to win a championship this year, and this is a little different. But I, I enjoy uh, and appreciate what what that means and, and the fact that, like, you know, that's just a dangerous group that you'd have to go out and play every night. And lastly, uh, in terms of the trade from Phoenix, is that something you were expecting or something that kind of blindsided you? Um, I mean, you get a feel after a certain amount of time in the league, um, being on a team with championship expectations and not, you know, achieving them, you know, changes are going to be made. Uh, I had a feeling I figured I'd be on the move, didn't know where, but, um, you know, happy to have landed here, young group focused, committed on, you know, development, growing, um, you know, and, and I'm excited. I'm just excited to get started. Hey, Landry. Uh, you mentioned community and wanting to impact. What is it that you want to do to take that step of being into the community in the DMV area and yeah. making sure that people don't just know you for who you are on the floor, mm -hmm. but can kind of come up to you and talk to you about things off the floor and yeah. have that kind of one-to-one -one touch that you don't typically see from NBA players? For sure. Um, I know for me, I'm a big proponent of you know mental health and... Um, I don't know. I think there's still, I know there's been a lot of progress made in the last number of years of talking about things, people in my position talking about their own personal experiences. Um, but I still think people, humans to one another is still a bit of taboo there. And, you know, I'm here to just try to be a soundboard to have those kind of harder conversations, um, especially with kids and young people trying to figure it out. So obviously I'm not super acclimated here, um, but, you know, trying to involve myself in the community as much as possible, get around people, meet people, um, and hopefully be somebody who is seen for more than just what I do on a basketball court, like you said. And then on the basketball court, what is that next step for Landry Shamit once you return from this injury healthy? What do you want to do this season to take that next step, knowing that this is a year of, as you mentioned, a team that people might underestimate and can be very dangerous? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... You know, just having confidence in myself um, and being able to express that. You know, I feel like what I can bring to the table is, you know, far beyond what's been shown uh, to this point. Um, I know that. I've had a good, a great off offseason. Um, body feels great. Basketball-wise, I feel great. Um, you know, the things I want to do defensively, what kind of player I want to be seen as, somebody you can put on a, you know, one of the better perimeter guards night in and night out and, and guard him. Um, I think that's something I, I definitely pride myself on and want to be want to be known for. Um, and then just continuing to, you know, take advantage of opportunities offensively and and just be the player I know I can be. In your time with the Clippers, how well did you know Michael Winger and yeah. in what ways did that impact things once you got here? Yeah, I mean having a prior relationship with your GM makes, you know, early conversations easy. Um, you know, so him and I have been able to be pretty transparent, have some good conversations with one another. Um, and there's not really the whole get to know you phase anymore either. So um, that, you know, just feels good to, to step in with a previous relationship with the guy, I know him, spent a couple years with him, I know his character, he's a great dude. Um, you know, and just excited to, to be working with him again. People in this city are learning him as much as they're going to be learning you, mm -hmm. probably even more so since he operates behind the scenes. Yep. Uh, you just described this a little bit, but what is he like? I think more than anything, um, you know, it's funny. He, you know, we had a little family function the other day, uh, invited our families, and we all got to get together before the season. Um, and my mom's here and she's, you know, obviously meeting everyone for the first time, doesn't know who's who, someone from someone. Um, and we were talking with Mike for quite some time uh, and we got home and she was like, who was, who was the guy who we were, you know, da, da, da. 
was like, oh, that's our GM. That's that's Michael Weir. He's like, that's your GM? Like, he's such a, I would never peg him as like a GM and, you know, whatever that might mean. But he's a very just down to earth, good human. Um, he's a regular person. He's not, you know, I mean, he wants to win. He's he's competitive. He's committed to obviously the job and the craft at, and, and getting us better. But he's a, just, a, he's a person like the rest of us. A really good dude. So um, I thought that was interesting that she, made that comment and it just kind of speaks to you know who he is and how he can relate with other people cool appreciate you guys